Doctors of Reddit. What is something that you wish everyone knew about their body? This one is more about medication. Antibiotics only work against bacteria. They are not some kind of wonder potion that cures anything. And they should not always be given. Please please stick to your prescription the doctor gives you. Even if you already feel better. Don't just stop. Unless the doctor says you can stop. A lot of medication needs to be taken according to the prescription in order for it to be effective. Because you build up the doses to an effective level. Stopping or not sticking to it really decreases effectivity. Tell us what drugs and alcohol you're on. We aren't gonna tell the cops. We aren't gonna lecture you. But it might change the anesthesia I give you. Some stuff I give you might kill you. If you drink a 30 pack a day. Tell me. My stepdad is a painter. He was in a house fire at the beginning of the year. They had to put him under to remove huge chunks of skin from his arms, neck, chest, and the majority of the skin from his hands. He also has a meth problem. For information sake, that's not related to this house fire slash work accident. He wasn't coherent enough to answer when they asked if he used any drugs. And my mom wasn't there. So I told them the truth. When my mom got back, she was pissed. Apparently my being honest with a nurse fucked up his workman's comp case. Fuck me. I'm sorry I didn't want him to potentially die from an interaction with anesthetic. Ejaculating blood happens to most people at least once in their lives, and in 99% of cases it resolves without taking any action within a week. It doesn't even warrant a doctor visit. Peeing blood, for both sexes, is a serious medical emergency and you should immediately go to the ER. People think it's the other way around. How to eat healthy. Just because you're skinny doesn't mean you're healthy. Especially the teenagers who I take care of. Sometimes I will ask them what's a healthy food your doctor wants you to eat. Rarely do I get a right answer. I feel like the internet has so many fat diets. And family members rarely cook. So families don't know basic nutrition facts. If you could keep track of the assorted parts you've had removed or added. That'd be very helpful. I'm not saying you need to know whether your fund application was innocent or a door. But if you're complaining about belly pain it would be nice to know that the last time you had belly pain they took out your gallbladder slash appendix slash sigmoid colon. And if you've ever had something implanted and they gave you a little card, that's not warranty information. That tells us if you're going to explode, if you go in an MRI, bring it. Otherwise it will be googled question about MRI that feels too dumb to ask my mother, nurse, if I have metal retainer in my mouth, can I never get an MRI? Growing up she said, if I got a tattoo I couldn't get an MRI, but found out that was just to try to get me not to get one. That there is a wide range of normal. Don't be embarrassed by your body. Having said that, if you are concerned about anything, ask your doctor. We have generally heard it all before. And trust me, we have nearly always seen it all before. Maybe you have something that has been bothering you for ages, but you were too scared or embarrassed to ask about it. Just ask. It might be nothing, and you have been stressing about it for no reason. And if not, then you are at least one step closer to getting it fixed. No one can help if they don't know. There are no stupid questions. So ask away. I'm always amazed when I have been asked about something that has been bothering a patient for years and years, but they were too embarrassed slash scared to bring it up. Most of the time, it is nothing slash a completely normal body function slash feature. Other times, it is something that should have been discussed right away. You know your body best. So speak up. Don't wait for the doctor to ask the right question. I finally quit peeing myself after deciding to ask my abjin about it. Started after the birth of first and thought it was just going to be that way. Finally decided to bring it up and she said it is common not normal. Few months of physical therapy and I'm much better. So glad I asked. Some people seem to think that if you act healthy for a bit, it'll make up for being a wreck. There are so many things wrong with this. Just one example, antioxidants are like gas for your car. You can store up a certain amount of vitamins, but your tank can only hold so much. If you binge and overfill your tank, it doesn't do anything, you excrete it out as waste. 
and you can't expect to go the next several months without gas just because you tried to overload it before. You're going to still need to get gas. Same goes for your fruits and veggies. Had someone tell me he went vegetarian for a few weeks, which meant he was done for the year. He was dead serious. Had a patient at risk for heart failure try to insist that if she stayed away from salt entirely for x days slash weeks, she should be able to have her fill of McDonald's fries and ramen. Had a smoker argue that if he stopped for some time, he should be able to smoke freely for a while with some digging. Stopping turned out to mean a couple less cigarettes a day. I think there are a lot of obvious ones. Like how lifestyle choices in your 20s impact your health and quality of life in your 40s. It would help if more patients knew their family history. Though not everyone has this opportunity unfortunately. Prevention is becoming more and more important in medicine. And treating a disease in its early stages is a lot better than catching it late. If you have family members who had ovarian or colon cancer in their 30s, that is very significant for your own risk. The screening and tests we run might change, depending. If you want to start the pill, it's important to know about breast cancer, DVTs, clotting disorders in the family. If you're a bit overweight and have no metabolic syndrome problems in the family, compared to a bit overweight, but both your parents have type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease. The management priorities change. Asking your family about any recurring diseases or diseases that occurred early, 20s, 30s, maybe 40s, can be helpful. My phone is acting up. So if this has already been posted I apologize. But women, please do not use soap or douching products inside your vagina. It has a delicate pH balance and this is how you get yeast infections. Wash your labia, but do not clean internally. The vagina is self-cleaning just like your eyeballs. Do you wash your eyeballs? No. Do you wash your face? Yes. The vagina is self-cleaning. Just like your eyeballs. Do you wash your eyeballs? No. This is a great way to explain it. Don't do DIY surgery or hold off on reporting things that are obvious warning signs. Don't be the guy who tried to remove his skin cancer with a knife. You need some kind of exercise. Doesn't matter how you feel right now. Sitting for 12 to 16 hours a day will have negative consequences. Your kidneys and liver cheerfully do all the toxin elimination you'll ever need. Cleanses and other detoxifying products are bullshit woo and a waste of money. The people who sell them are predators who only care about your money becoming this. When I was in high school, before I knew it was a scam. I actually wanted to try an herbal drink that claimed to detoxify the body. I was legitimately interested in trying it out, but I had one simple question. Before I wanted to try it, what was it detoxifying? No one could answer me with a straight answer. I talked to friends drinking it, and I spoke with the customer service for the product I even emailed the company asking this question and no one could tell me anything specific outside of it helps cleanse harmful toxins in the body. I became suspicious and never bothered trying it. My suspicions were confirmed when I saw a documentary about bogus health businesses. Detoxification products and services being one of them. I remember my friends looking into juice cleanses right after college. I asked what they cleansed from the body. Their answer, salt. Type 2 diabetes is more serious than most people realize. I work as a doctor in hemodialysis and most of them are due to diabetic nephropathy. It also affects your eyes nerves immune system etc. Simple life changes can help you, but noon seems to care. I even lost 9 kilograms myself because I had a family history of diabetes and to be healthy. Diabetic here. So much this. I'm trying to do my best by carb counting. Checking my levels 8 to 10 times a day. Setting the diabetes team next week to try and get approval for a pump and or CGM. I was diagnosed 23 months ago after severe acute pancreatitis which destroyed my pancreas and nearly killed me. Diabetes complications scare me. Amputations. Blindness and kidney failure are bad news. But it's DKA that really scares me. How to check for skin cancer. If you see any moles or anything that are a asymmetrical b border odd borders. 
like they are jagged or something. C. Color. Different colors. D. Diameter. Grows. E. Evolve. Well. Evolves. Go get it checked out. It might be skin cancer. I remember showering one day and noticing a mole on my foot and thinking that's new. And also a weird place for a mole. Then every so often in the shower I'd notice it. Over the course of a few months it started to change rapidly and I kept putting off seeing a doctor about it, busy with work, life, etc. Close bracket. I finally got to a skin specialist. He took one look at it and said that's got to come out. I'm thinking. Yep sure biasy blah blah and he's like no. That's definitely skin cancer. I'm not freaking out but mildly concerned. It gets taken out and sent off. Couple of weeks go by and I get a call asking if I can come back in to discuss the results. I already know it's skin cancer based on the initial reaction but I was not expecting to get there. Walk in the room and see another doctor there. An oncologist. Stage 3 C skin cancer that I was not prepared for. They basically said that I was around one month away from being stage 4, terminal, with a life expectancy of 5 years. That was 18 months ago. I've had 3 major surgeries. Plenty of tissue and 8 cancerous lesions removed since then. For now it's ongoing maintenance and checkups every 3 months. Long story short. Geo. And get your skin checked at least one a year. No excuses. There is no cure for cancer as it is traditionally thought about. Cancer is a class of many many very different diseases. Each with very specific causes, i.e. some molecule that went wrong allowing a cell to multiply out of control. Even within the same type of cancer, i.e. lung cancer, there are many types of lung cancer. Such as small cell, large cell, squamous cell etc. Even within the same subtype of cancer, there can be different molecular mechanisms that caused it requiring different approaches to treatment. Looking for the cure for cancer is like looking for the cure for disease. Apostrophe. That administering CPR compressions as soon as possible is one of the greatest indicators of successful outcomes. Had a guy roll in post torsades arrest. The guy behind him at the DMV when he went down was an IQ nurse who started compressions within seconds and got the yield attached. Patient came in talking with his only complaint being chest pain from the compressions. I wouldn't have believed it if the medics hadn't given me the rhythm strip. Where the orifice each gender urinates through really is. Antibiotics are not some magic cure for every pain in your body. Nor for the flu or common cold. Never ever boil breast milk. In my country there is a popular belief that breast milk jaundice and newborns can be treated by boiling one's breast milk. But by doing this, you destroy all the nutrients and it basically becomes as nutritious as water is. Do not give honey to children below the age of 1. Do not rub your child with rubbing alcohol as to lower his fear. Baby wipes don't substitute daily baths slash showers. Yes. I'm a pediatrician. This is going to sound really basic. But I wish my patients would know what meds they are on when they come to the hospital. At least once a day comes somebody in who goes yeah I take 8 pills in the morning. 3 in the evening. And 4 at lunch. But don't ask me which. You're a doctor. You should know. I beg of you. Before going to a doctor that has never seen you before. Write your meds. Dosis and all on a piece of paper. Edit. I was on shift and just now noticed that this blew up. Just to clarify. I work in Germany on the internal medicine ward. I can only see patients record if they were in my hospital or in the neighboring hospital otherwise I have to call their family doc who may or may not be at all times available. I mostly just send a family member home to bring the goodies bag so that we can go over them but as you can imagine that takes a lot of time. Thank you for the silvers. I shall treasure them forever. I'm a vet. But I'm sure some doctors will have come across this too. Amputated limbs do not grow back. I've had far too many people asking how long it will take for their pet's amputated limb to grow back. So I'm assuming a few doctors out there will have had patients asking the same of their own missing limbs. Maybe those people you've met think all animals are like lizards. J slash key think sometimes. It's shock or fear of what might be ahead and how things might change that makes people say that. And then again. Some are just stupid or ignorant. Also, thanks for what you do as a vet. 
taking care of vulnerable creatures. I do it for the waggy tails and fluffy snuggles I get from my patients. I can understand shock and fear causing someone to ask a silly question. I can understand someone being uneducated. Or someone who has difficulty comprehending some things. Those things I can usually recognize, and I'll do my best to talk the person through the situation, and make sure they know what's going on with their beloved fur baby. But some people are just ignorant for the sake of it, and it's like explaining something to a brick. I had one lady, who came across as intelligent and well to do, plus she was wearing an ID card that said she was a teacher at a local high school, and when I explained to her that the best option for her dog, who had been having ongoing treatment with me, so she was well aware the dog was ill, was to amputate its leg. She agreed. We talked treatment and likely prognosis. Post-surgery recovery plans. Pain meds. Costs and payment options. And then she asked how long will it take for the leg to grow back. I told her that it wouldn't. She replied, why not? I know it happens. You guys must have a treatment for that. I thought she must mean a prosthetic or an implant. Nope. She meant the actual flesh and bone leg. Growing back. As if her border collie had the regenerative abilities of an axolotl. You often will feel normal even with high blood pressure. It's often found incidentally. So don't wait until it gives you symptoms you don't want to go through. That the immune system is an incredibly complex and nuanced organization of cells that communicates readily to destroy anything deemed hostile within the body. It helps explain why vaccines are supposed to work, why allergies come and go, and why transfusion slash transplants are hard to successfully pull off. Edit. A lot of people are asking how allergies work. So here is a brief explanation using pollen, allergic rhinitis. As an example, your immune system senses pollen in the body. It doesn't appear to be one of your cells. So the B cell collects samples of it, relays it to a helper T cell which in turn, helps specialize the B cell to become one of two cells, effector and memory cells. Effectors mass produce antibodies, while memory cells are reserved for future invasions. This is why initial exposure to a new substance may not necessarily trigger allergic responses. The signal is still weak as the immune system is still acclimating to a foreign particle. Antibodies flood the pollen particles and signal for basophil slash mast cells to release histamine, the hormone responsible for inflammatory responses. This is where the runny noses and sneezing come into play and for more severe allergies. Anaphylatic shock. Allergies may fade out over time for several reasons. When exposed to a non-threatening level of an allergy for a long enough time, the body decides that it's not really a threat anymore. Furthermore, as people age, the immune system weakens, making it harder to detect and overreact to allergies. 